We've got a delay here at the Value City Arena in Columbus. The lights are still not back at full power, so this game will not start as scheduled, and we'll just have to kind of wait and see, but there was nothing wrong with the lighting or Ohio State's shooting earlier this week, Jim. It's all about sharing the basketball, and when you have willing passers, who, when you see an open man give it up now, you're able as a shooter to catch it with him. And Shannon got, um, Scott has been a catalyst of this, but it's spread throughout the team where it's not just about me, but it's about getting my teammate an open shot. Ohio State shot 65% in that 11-point win against Marquette on Tuesday night to put the Buckeyes at 2-0. and oh. I guess this is a further challenge for Ohio State, Jim. They're shooting so well. Let's see how they shoot without full wattage. Well, I figured this. They've been shooting so well. You talked about the 63% that even in warm-ups, they shot so well, they shot the lights out. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I mean. And why not? D'Angelo Russell will take a few extra practice shots. Seems to be getting a little bit brighter in here. It's almost like the sun rising, baby. Just slowly <laughs> getting lighter. Anthony Latina is in his second year as the head coach. Had a tough debut last season going just 5-26 and 26 and trying to rebuild this pioneer basketball program. He'd been a longtime assistant at Sacred Heart. Tommy it was interesting talking to Coach Latina, but a lot of those games he felt was very close games, not getting blown out in a lot of them, so that's why he's so positive coming into this year. Good point. Well, it's time now for tonight's State Farm State of Success. And how about the job Thad Mata has done? This is his 11th year in Columbus. But look at that. You just don't come to Columbus and beat a Thad Mata coached basketball team. A lot of talent has, you know, blessed this court here. And the Thad Mata, the ability to sell the program, to sell Ohio State, has been phenomenal. And as successful as he's been, it's funny because he still doesn't get the credit. I mean, no. you have to win that championship. That gets you that instant cred, but a heck of a coach, heck of a program. Opening tip controlled by the Buckeyes. Shannon Scott from the baseline and the rebound by Davon Barnett. And Tom, is very important early in this game against the zone, talking to Coach Latina, what they want to do is if you have available shot early on, take it. If not, don't force it. But you have to see the ball go in, have some confidence. If not, this game can get away from them real quick. Now the Buckeyes quickly force a turnover. The Pioneers have averaged 15 turnovers a game. Well, the problem is you're averaging more turnovers, I mean, more turnovers than assists mm -hmm. for the Pioneers. And against Ohio State, they do an excellent job of turning those into baskets. Russell with the miss. Lee with an attempted putback, partially blocked. Down with it is Kane Broom, the freshman. Sacred Heart, one win, one loss. There is a common foe. UMass Lowell, a team Ohio State beat by 37. Sacred Heart lost to by three on Thursday night. Five, 15 to shoot. And another turnover. The steal pulled out of there by D'Angelo Russell. Then he's called for traveling by Eric Curry. Our referees tonight, Eric Curry, Brian Dorsey, and Tim Stewart. Well, one issue you're going to have right now, and that's Broom as a freshman, is the intensity in which Shannon Scott plays defense, but also the length on the perimeter is a little bit different than the Pioneer, Pioneers team is accustomed to. So pass the ball, try not to over-dribble, shift the defense, and maybe you can attack the gaps that way. That is going to be the third turnover on Sacred Heart because it's an offensive foul, that swim move by the freshman out of Poland, Philippe Nowitzki. And not the start that Coach Latina wanted. At least you're able to get some shots at the rim and not three consecutive turnovers. We still don't have a point scored in this game. We're a couple of minutes late in getting started, but lighting now back. This is Lee on the block, double team. Russell, he'll drive. Tough shot goes, and he is fouled. You see how special this young man can be. Excellent use of uh, the pump fake, but getting back in position so Lee could kick it back out, and then the ability to take the contact, make an acrobatic move, and finish with his offhand. Uh, you know, the Marquette game was tough because yeah. he just never got into a rhythm. 
he had been playing so well in the exhibition season in the first couple of, in the first game. But actually, I think he was kind of good because he learned a lot about what this game is really about at another level. And I think that game will ultimately help him as the season continues to move forward. By the way, the freshman Nowitzki's already picked up two personal fouls. He's one of the few legitimate big men, and now he's on the Sacred Heart bench. And think about the two fouls weren't really yeah. active fouls where you were either, you know, going after a block shot or you tried to take a charge. These were, you know, kind of silly fouls. Nice look down low and a missed layup by Barnett. Rebound snatched out of there by Lee. The lob to Thompson. Either off a turnover or a missed shot. This Ohio State team will look to attack in transition. And for the Pioneers, when the ball goes up, you got to get two back. If not, you'll see a, enough of Sam Thompson flying through the air that you'll get sick of it <laughs> through the Pioneers. Thompson, the 6'7 senior out of Chicago, and He's had so many highlight dunks since he came to Columbus. Three ball rimmed by Gaetano. And Ohio State still pitching a shutout almost three minutes into it. Lee doubled up, and that'll be a reach in foul on Sacred Heart. Well, you see the quick double team, but here it is. It's off the missed shot. Lee immediately up the court. Shannon Scott, two dribbles, three, four. Head up to a streaking Sam Thompson. Again, that's really good offense, tr offensive transition for Ohio State, but poor defensive transition by the Pioneers. Again, the lob to Thompson! Wow. 7 nothing Buckeyes. I don't even know what to say. You know, you run out of superlatives when you explain Sam Thompson. Now that's a welcoming sign right there because this Pioneers team last game had excellent shots, but just couldn't knock them down. Scott inside the lee, stripped away and saved. Kane Broom made that triple for Sacred Heart. He was 0 for 8 on the year behind the arc before that one. Lee's miss. Running is Kelly. Kelly driving. The shot blocked. Here come the Buckeyes. Shannon Scott on the attack. And it's 9-3 Ohio State. Three and a half minutes into it. The body language. Everything about Shannon, Con Shannon Scott is so different this year. The confidence is there. Patiently waited his turn, Tom. Well, he's a special young player, although he's a senior. Kane Broom called the timeout to avoid another turnover. Ohio State off to a highlight-type start. Ohio State only has nine healthy bodies tonight, Jim, nine. so Sacred Heart isn't going to catch a break. Yeah, but, but you know, what a good nine. Yes. Ohio State. So, I mean, that makes up for it. But it's also good because you have different lineups. Guys get more minutes early in the season. I think that's also, that's very good for continuity later on. And it's a deeper club for Ohio State than in past years. Russell the miss. He'll follow. Missed again. McDonald with the miss. Put back. Tipped up and in by D'Angelo Russell. But what you have also, you see a full court press here. It's players now for Ohio State that can make plays. It's not mm -hmm. just Shannon Scott. Russell can make plays. Cam Williams, Sam. And on the drive, foul zone got fouled. That'll be on Shannon Ohio Scott. He is first. Sacred Heart frustrated here in the early going. Basketball on BTN is presented by April Air. Feel good inside. Brought to you in part by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. And by Panera Bread. Panera gift cards are perfect for everyone on your list this holiday season. The Buckeye faithful enjoying a quick start, 11 to 3. And it's no secret Ohio State should win and win big, Jim. But Matt Mata said it, it's still about coming out and taking an opponent serious. This season's too young to overlook anyone. But it's how you win. Um, do you play mm -hmm. as a team? Do you do the little things defensively in the zone? When your teammate is open, do you pass in the basketball? Do you execute the offense? Those are the things that you look at. It, you know, it could be a 40-point game. You say, well, what do you take out of it? Well, did we execute when we needed to? You know, offensively and defense. And that's something that the coaching staff, I know, harps on their players about is that you know, we got to get this continuity thing down pat before we go into Big Ten play. 
Foul zone. Missed. Followed it. He'll try again. Blocked again by Trey McDonald. Foul zone once again. And this time drew contact. And that'll be on McDonald. So good effort by Tevin foul zone, the 6'7 junior. Well, film session right here. No matter what happens in this game, if they win by 20 or 30, this is one of the things that Coach Mod and Coach Staff have talked about. And say, well, if we're playing Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan State, this kind of lack of attention to detail will cost us games. Sometimes you have to learn the hard way. You do. And it's always something you can learn within the game. You know, win or lose. Close or not close, coaches will always point out some things. And you as players, Tom, you know it too. Yeah. You kind of hate the film <laughs> session to come around, especially when you know you're involved in a couple plays that uh, kind of stood out. Buckeyes up six, four and a half minutes into this one. First ever meeting between these two schools. McDonald didn't come close. And there's going to be a foul again on Sacred Heart. Boy, they're racking up the fouls here in a hurry. Yeah, That's McDonald, the fourth team. Yeah, McDonald missed that shot. He, normally, he's a pretty good shooter from about the free throw line. That one just a little bit off, but I think it's the size aspect of it right there. Loving had inside position on foul zone. Just wrapped him up underneath and got another foul call. D'Angelo Russell, he can play the point. He can play the off guard. Thompson, who's had a couple of highlight dunks, now shows that outside jumper. A 15-foot pull-up. He's worked on that extensively over the summer, not just relying on his athletic ability, which we all know is just on another level, but that just comes with maturity as a basketball player, improving different parts of your game. 13 to 8, Ohio State. We're five minutes in. This is four-year starter Phil Gaetano. Three ball by Glowiak. Scott with the long rebound. Buckeyes looking to run. Russell for three. And a good block out that time by foul zone. Yeah, but a good transition three by Russell because you had guys in rebounding position just weren't able to get an offensive rebound. But those are kind of shots that you look for early in transition if you're Ohio State. Thompson pulling down his third rebound of the young game. Loving with the miss. McDonald hustles after it. Ohio State six minutes into it, leading Sacred Heart 13 to 5. Buckeyes averaging 83 points a game this young season. Buckeye turnover recovered by Loving. Scott finds the open Russell on the drive. Got it to go. This is a nice pump pick. Yeah, with the smooth lefty and earlier. I had to correct myself. I said he shot his and one with his off hand, but it's his left hand. It looked like it was right, but smooth. And right there, I like the fact that he pulled up for the jump shot and should have tried to take it all the way. That's in the block that time. And, McDonald. and the possession arrow favors Sacred Heart. Some good early minutes here for Trey McDonald, who's been active. Early minutes, I think it's good because he can give you another body inside that can score, but also from a defensive perspective can do this. And in the Big Ten, you know as anybody, Tom, if you can have a guy that can clog up the lane, that can rebound, intimidate a little bit, it can take you a long way defensively. You have to have some inside presence in Big Ten play, don't you, Jim? Well, it, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a straight-up post-up player, but in Trey McDonald's case, he can knock down the 15-footer, rebound the block shots like we just saw. How about See, that right look? Right there. He got another one, didn't he? And another traveling violation on Sacred Heart. But think about this. Sacred Heart, smaller team, but they're able still to penetrate the zone and break down the zone. Now, they're not finishing inside. And again, a teaching point is, and I watched this against Marquette, the gaps in this zone defense you're getting away with right now against some of these teams, but in Big Ten play, it's going to come back to bite the Buckeyes if they don't tighten that up. On the drive, Russell was fouled. Frustrating start for Anthony Latina, but he knew that they would have their hands full here tonight. I mean, he's a realist. This is a club that's in a rebuild mode. He does have some four-year starters, but... When you've only won five games the previous year, Jim, you don't, you don't go from five wins to 20 the next season. Well, you don't, and a lot of it has to do with your returning talent and who you you have coming in, but Coach Latina in practice said, listen, for us, if we can knock down some shots early, that gives us a shot 
to stay competitive and not turn it over. Well, haven't been able to either <laughs> of those two things right now, but still a lot of time left in his first half. Yeah, back to the drawing board. Yeah, yeah. 16 to 5 Buckeyes, 12.45 left in the half. Sacred Heart is one for 11 shooting. How about that, though? On cue, the four-year starter, Phil Gaetano, who's a 50% three-point shooter, knocks down that triple. And Coach Latina loves Phil Gaetano. He's one of the best passers in the country, tough-minded point guard. Uh, McDonald is just having his way inside. Nowitzki's back on the floor with two fouls. He couldn't get aggressive. Well, he, not at all, because the early, the earlier fouls that he put, picked up were away from the ball, and that time... Clay McDonald understood that. He got in prime time position to get an offensive rebound and then was able to finish with a nice jump hook. Buckeyes on top, 18 to 8. This is Gaetano. Nice look down low and another missed layup, this time by Nowitzki. And Nowitzki was caught in between. Do I dunk it or do I lay it up? And that time he did neither, neither one. Air ball by Thompson, yanked out of there by foul zone. Pioneers in the front court. Open look in the corner, knocked down by the four-year starter, Evan Kelly. That's his first triple of the season. And that was an excellent possession that time. The ball was able, was able to be entered at the free throw line. Defense collapse. You make a nice pass to the corner, and that's how you attack the zone defense. A look at D'Angelo oh. Russell. You can't teach that. The patience. That time. One dribble, two dribbles, got to a spot, now able to finish. He may have a double-double by halftime. Ten points, five rebounds for Russell. And it's going to be a joy to watch him as he matures and continues to get more comfortable with the college game on how much his game really expands. It's just the tip of the iceberg right now, Tom. Gaetano for three. You touched on a gym as Thompson is fouled underneath. Coach Thad Mata said just what you said. It wasn't that bad a thing for D'Angelo Russell to have a tough game against Marquette. How would he respond tonight? Welcome back, the Ohio State Buckeyes holding on to a nine-point lead for Sacred Heart. And, Tom, I talked earlier about the gaps in the, in the defense here for Ohio State, and you have to play big. Right now, Ohio State, what I've seen this year, are playing small. Penetrating passes are able to get with inside the zone defense. And as we roll this play here, this is against Sacred Heart. And not a big team, not a quick team, but once again, the lack of communication, but also playing small, arms down to the side, allows these penetrating passes. Now, this shot was eventually blocked. But again, in Big Ten play, yeah. that's a dunk. That's a great point. Ohio State on top, 20 to 11, as we near the midpoint here of the first half. Ohio State, and that'll be a reach-in foul on Barnett already. The Buckeyes in the bonus. No surprise, Ohio State has outscored Sacred Heart 16 to nothing in the paint. Well, it would be a shame if Ohio State just would settle for jump shots mm -hmm. in a game like this, even though it would come easy. But the thing you have to realize if you're Ohio State, we're trying to build something moving towards conference play. And how do we do that? We execute. We don't settle for jump shots. We take it. Now you're able to get fouled, get to the free throw line. And then guess what? Those jump shots then open up because the defense is so afraid of the inside presence that the jump shots become a lot easier. Second free throw here for Mark Loving. Well, BTN goes where you want, when you want it, with BTN to go, presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Watch live hoops on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. To learn more, visit btn2go.com. Ohio State will play a lot more zone this season than we've seen in recent years. But Coach Thad might have said, hey, look, we, we played a lot of zone in previous years back in 2008 and 2009. Young teams. Yeah. You notice it was young teams. A deep three. Wow. Steve Glowiak. Three points. That was Steve Glowiak. Almost a 30-footer. Yeah, but how many of those can you make? I mean, those are the shots Ohio State are willing to give up. A 30-footer. She's saying it coming off the screen. 
Scott with the miss. Poked away from behind, but recovered by the Pioneers. This is Gloyak, who just hit that long three moments ago. Sacred Heart within seven. And Tom, back to that zone. Well, with a young team, the man-to-man -man principles are tough to grasp right away, so you go to a zone. Also within the zone, if you rebound well, you can get out and run a lot better. Okay, so it's a couple different schools of thoughts to why that's taking place with that mod in this Buckeye team. Loyak missed that triple. Jay Sean Tate in there with the rebound. And a three ball knocked down. So Mark Loving, the Toledo sophomore, has his fourth triple of the season. Ohio State now with a 10 point lead to Sacred Heart. Calls the timeout. Uh, excellent defense right here by the Buckeyes. But if you're going to get beat by three, this is out there by the hash mark. I mean, during layup lines when I was in the NBA, we would just shoot there during warm-up. But, you know, those are the shots that unfortunately at times are going to be, I don't know if it's available. or well, you they're would, available. Well, they're available to take. But how many of those really are you going to knock down with any kind of consistency? So... You just pat him on the butt and say, good shot, and go back down the other way. I would say if you take two of them, Jim, you're probably sitting next to the head coach shortly. Well, there's been a couple that's been deep already, <laughs> okay? Maybe not as deep as that one. But, you know, here's the thing is that Coach Latina, you know, he encourages guys to take good shots when they have them. Now, is that a good shot? But we'll credit this that the shot clock was going down. How about that? I'll take Okay, it. you'll take that? Okay. But, Jim, quite honestly, for them to, to pull off what would be a mammoth upset, they would have to have that kind of a night, wouldn't they, where they just completely shoot out of their minds. And they would also have to lessen the possessions of the game, slow the game down so Ohio State can't get 60, 70 points, keep it in a 40, 50-point range, and that's when they have a chance. But if you turn it over and let Ohio State get out in transition, it won't be... Won't, won't be even close. That's already the sixth turnover in the Pioneers. A lot of them unforced. Tate on the drive, counted, and yeah. another Sacred Heart foul. That's already 19 Sacred fouls on Sacred Heart, just two on the Buckeyes. Well, part of being a good defensive team is being in position before the ball gets here. Right now, you're trying to recover to get back to a guy who already is going into his move. So, Jay Sean Tate had the event. And, it, and this is a player here, Tom, that what is his position? You just put him on the court. He's going to rebound, going to play defense, he's going to score, he's going to scrap, he's tough-minded. So you don't, you, you put him at the forward, yeah, put him at the two, yeah, but you just need him on the court because he's going to give you a little something, a little something, something. I know it's not fair to compare, Jim, but already you've heard some comparisons as far as his game, a lot like David Lighty, who had such a great career here because, as you said, he could play anywhere and guard anybody from a point guard to the five. Well, both players, what they both have in common, they're willing to do the dirty work, mm -hmm. okay? Not so much concerned about how many plays am I going to get run for me, but what can I do to help my team be successful? And that's why David Lighty went on to have a stellar career here, and Jay Sean Tate is uh, following his footsteps. Foul zone down low, drew the foul, and he'll go to the line and shoot a pair. Ohio State foul, 15, So we've got a timeout here in Columbus. Ohio State in command, 27 to 14. Sacred Heart University, it's only 51 years old out of Fairfield, Connecticut. As you see, the enrollment, 3,700. John Ratzenberger, better known as Cliff Clavin, from the television show Cheers, as well as Saturday Night Live star Kevin Nealon. And now the athletic director is Bobby Valentine, a tremendous major league manager who guided the New York Mets to a World Series appearance and a longtime manager, not only in the major leagues, but also in Japan. Bobby Valentine was one of the greatest athletes to ever come out of the New England area, and Jimmy could have played at USC as a tailback, went as a baseball player, had a devastating leg injury, never had quite the career he would have had had he not had that injury, but he was some kind of manager. I, yeah. th I think it worked out for him, Tom. And, and it's weird because, and I don't know the connection with Sacred Heart and Bobby Valentine as to why he chose and they chose for that position, but it's, it's, it's interesting when you have a, a character figure like that yeah. that comes to a school. What? 
does it add credibility, you credibility bet. and legitimacy to the program? So I'm sure he's having a ball. Mark Loving is going to be called for traveling. That's only the third Ohio State turnover. Ohio State substitution zero. D'Angelo Russell replacing Cam Williams. Oh. Well, stay tuned at the half for the State Farm Halftime Report. Mike Hall will bring you the latest news and highlights from our Big Ten studios. Plus, we'll preview the all-new Big Ten Elite featuring the 1996 Ohio State Buckeyes. Scott will finish. And the Buckeyes lead 29-16. to Real simple, fast break. You just make the right play time. I mean, you don't have to be spectacular that time. Two on one, able to turn it over, get an easy layup. And a lot of times, again, you, you take these games right here. Do you give up on the play? It's easy. D'Angelo Russell down, head up, three dribbles, the simple play. Not trying to be spectacular. And is that hard in a game like this, it Jim? Is. Not to try for the home run, but to just hit the single if we can bring back Bobby Valentine? Well, because you know you can get away with it. Okay, yeah. if you turn it over, you miss that shot, eh, it's really not going to impact you because you have the game under control. But that's not the kind of mentality you want if you really want to win and win big. That's what makes a Wisconsin so good because they're consistent in the way they play game in and game out, no matter who their opponent or what the score is. From the baseline, Broom got it and a foul. Well, they've also got a pretty good point guard that probably wouldn't settle for guys just doing whatever they wanted on their own. Who's that? I, I, who's that? Who's that? A youngster named Trayvon Jackson. <laughs> I'm sitting next to the proud papa. Yeah, yeah, he's grown a lot. Uh, part of that with Bo is you see Broom with the beautiful floater right there on the baseline. One thing Bo Ryan does, he, he figures out players who kind of fit his system, who are right on the cusp of being pretty good. And now when they get in the program, you can see the growth mentally and physically in their game. And by the time they're juniors and seniors, I mean, the team is just a tough out. A tough, tough out. From the corner, D'Angelo Russell with a triple. Well, you should be proud. He's a terrific young man, and he's made a name for himself, and that's sometimes hard to do when your dad had as great a career as you did, and Trayvon has made quite a mark in Madison, and the Badgers right there again as one of the elite teams in college basketball. Yeah, the beauty is he chose a school that he wanted to go to where he felt comfortable, and that's more important than anything because, Tom, I had my years of glory in playing. Now was his time to yeah. kind of create his own mark on the um, game of basketball. Shot missed by Broom. What he didn't tell you is what I know being from Madison. He also likes State Street. <laughs> Mark Loving from the corner knocks down the triple. And Mark Loving loves that three-point line. The spacing is important here, too, when you're running the fast break. Sometimes you can crowd in and take that away, but that time Mark Loving, excellent spacing, able to knock it down. Broom driving, stumbling. Recovered the kick out. Lowiak for three. Short. Nice hustle inside and foul zone with a rebound. Got fouled. And this Sacred Heart team has done some good things. Yes. I mean, not able to finish and knock down shots, but just that possession there, it was one pass, two pass, get it to the open player. You missed the shot, but because the defense was constantly a half a second behind, now you get an offensive rebound. Well, the Sacred Heart Pioneers are picked to finish last in the Northeast Conference, but as we know, preseason predictions don't gotta, mean a whole lot. You, you got to play. I mean, Nebraska was picked to finish last in the Big yeah, Ten last year. Good point. They made it to the NCAA tournament, so you still have to play the game. Well, I'll tell you what, that kid can see the floor. Yeah. One of the best, like I said, Latina said, in the country as far as passing the ball. Well, I tell you, Ohio State in transition is fun to watch. They lead it 37 to 19. And what a night for Thompson, who has eight points and four rebounds. Lethal in transition. Foul zone. A lot of hands all over that ball. Oh, nice look down low. And getting free is Cole Walton for the layup, a 6'11 sophomore. That time it was just good patience. That time by Felzone, not panicking and just throwing a pass out. He read the defense well enough to get it down to his teammate. Walton's first points of this young season. Under four and a half to play. Buckeyes in control as Scott finds an open Anthony Lee. His first bucket. And Scott already with six assists. As Jim mentioned, in the open, 
Shannon Scott leading the country 12 and a half assists a game. Yep, D'Angelo Russell. Wow. Russell. And another quick timeout called by Anthony Latina. He knows that this thing is really getting out of hand here quickly. Buckeyes up 20. Tom, we're, we're fortunate we have some outstanding freshmen in our conference right now, and none better or right on that level than D'Angelo Russell. What makes him special is the ability of one to play both positions, the point guard position or the shooting guard. To finish inside with either hand, to shoot the ball with consistently, consi consistency, but also have a keen understanding of how to play the game. Yeah. I, again, I'm going to go back to this Marquette game. Things were a little fast for him right there. Now, this is a different level of competition. He's allowing the game to come to him, and when he does that, a couple things happen. One, he's more efficient. Two, he sees the court a lot better. Now he's setting up things for his teammates. So the maturation process is not going to be slow for him. His learning curve is on a really good arch and a quick one, too. Well, tonight, D'Angelo Russell, 15.6 rebounds. And a steal by Mark Lovett. Finds Thompson in the open floor. Pass deflected out of bounds. Buckeyes maintain possession. 3.51 left here in the first half. Ohio State cruising. They lead by 20 at 41 to 21. Buckeyes doing it on both ends of the floor. Come on, don't be hard on those guys. Get out, give them a hug. Sacred Heart has played hard, but Ohio State in high gear leads it 41 to 21. And yesterday the Buckeye offense was at it again, Jim. I'll tell you what, though. Give Andy, Indiana credit. Yes. This game was a lot closer late in this game, but the punt return, then the touchdown. The Ohio State offense was able to pick it up. But you got to figure out how to win games like this. Almost like a trap yeah. game. Because now you have Michigan coming in next week. It may not be the Michigan of old, but it's still a big rivalry. And do you look ahead? And maybe a little bit, but they were able to gather themselves back and ultimately win that game. Lovett knocks down another triple, his third triple. One thing about Ohio State football and basketball, they both get up and down the court or the field. Mm -hmm. And another turnover on the trap. Scott lost his footing. Here's Gaetano the other way with a floater, and it won't go. Tipped up and in nicely by Davon Barnett. And the, oh, we have some moisture on the floor, so Tim Stewart calling for the mop. Shannon's got it right here. Just, just slipped on the banana peel right there. Little condensation on the floor. No harm, no foul, no injuries. But, you know, back to what you said about the football and basketball. You know, this league for so many years is looked upon and still is in some aspect as a plotting kind of league. But if you look at the basketball teams with Michigan, Ohio State, Michigan State, Minnesota, Nebraska, all love to get up and down the court. And also some of the offenses, you see Russell coming off with a beautiful square up, steps right into a shot. A lot of the football teams in the conference, too, are going more towards that fast pace, up tempo, and now you're able to recruit the kind of athletes yeah. you really need to compete and win national championship. Should be a heck of a finish. Buckeyes up 46 to 23. We've got 250 left here in the first half. D'Angelo Russell has 17 points, and Mark Loving has 10 to lead the Buckeyes. Sacred Heart, a tough night shooting, 29% against this Buckeye zone. This is Nowitzki against Lee. And a shot clock violation. Good defense by the Buckeyes. And that time, Nowitzki not comfortable on the catch to go right into his move. That time kind of overthought the situation, trying to get closer to the basket instead of taking the initial one-two dribble jump up, jump up middle or to the baseline. Sacred Heart has made seven shots, and they have ten turnovers. End result, Buckeyes up by 23 with 2.20 left in the first half. Well, Ohio State did an outstanding job of never allowing the Pioneers to get comfortable. Thompson into the corner, loving feeling it. Rims it, follow, missed by Russell, and it belongs to Ohio State. Well, even on a simple defensive rebound right there by Nowitzki, just couldn't bring it in. The rhythm, 
It's just not there. That doesn't mean that these young men are not playing hard. But again, not, right there, not playing smart at times. That time no. you can't allow a pass just to come in right from underneath out of bounds for a lob in the middle of the lane. Thompson, the third Buckeye to hit double figures. He has 10. Ramming his way inside and near score by Barnett. And an Ohio State foul. That'll be the sixth on the Buckeyes. Ohio State foul three, Shannon Scott. Well, stay tuned for highlights, analysis, and a preview of Big Ten Elite featuring the 1996 Ohio State Buckeyes football team coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report. You got to give him a little love to Nowinski right there. That time, able to get the offensive rebound, keep the ball above his head, and go right back up. Again, you didn't have to think about it. You get it, you go, yeah. and, you, and you finish. Nowitzki is a freshman out of Poland, and you know one thing. He didn't see athletes like this in Poland. But he's lost weight, though. Yes. He's lost close to 60 pounds. His body wow. fat has come down. So he's trying to figure out how to operate in this new body of his. That's incredible. Russell to McDonald for the jam. Boy, the Buckeyes have been unselfish tonight. That is 12 assists for the Buckeyes on 21 field goals. 50 to 23, Ohio State. 120 left in the half. Gaetano up front. Nice look down low, Nowitzki with a layup, and Gaetano, one of the all-time great assist men in Sacred Heart and Northeast Conference basketball history. He's made some beautiful passes tonight. A lot of times, guys haven't finished. Inside, Russell with a scoop. Nowitzki with a rebound. It kind of reminds me, remember a guy named Mike? Missed there by... Oh, I was going to let you um... Isolino, he played with me in Dallas. He went to St. Francis College. Small in stature, but had a lot of heart. Could pass the heck out of the basketball. This was back in the day. You know, back in my early days, back in the early 90s. <laughs> but he, he kind of reminds me of that same kind of player. Well, that's a feel thing, too, isn't it? It the is. The ability to see the open court and pass like Gaetano does. Yeah, you can't teach it. You know, it just... You know where to put it, when to put it. It's like the touch of a quarterback. Mm -hmm. How you can throw a lob over the top or a nice fade pass or whatever it is, like right there. How about that play? And another miss. He, he should have about eight assists already. Four seconds left. And the Ohio State Buckeyes having their way with Sacred Heart tonight. Lead it 52 to 27 at the break. Thompson has been a highlight show all night long. Buckeyes with three and double figures. And the route is on. Halftime coming up. Buckeyes rolling tonight, the 20th ranked Buckeyes with a 25 point lead here at the intermission over Sacred Heart along with Jim Jackson. I'm Tom Hamilton, a pretty impressive showing. I know the competition isn't what it was Tuesday night, but you still have to come out and play. You have to play. We can talk about the stats, the turnovers, the points off turnovers, in paint, scoring for Ohio State. That would be simple, but I think what you want to look for is the execution part. In particular, in the second half when you're up big, do you still do the little things that yeah. will ultimately win you games? And that's how coaches really evaluate blowout wins. Is, did you stay engaged for 40 minutes throughout the game, or did you kind of just lay back and rest yeah. on your laurels a little bit? And remember again tonight, folks, not that it's going to matter. Amir Williams not playing. He has a sore knee. That's why you haven't seen him. Buckeyes holding him out tonight for cautionary reasons. Lee getting the start missed. He'll go right back up with it and score. Lee with four. And so that means Ohio State has nine healthy bodies. In other words, Sacred Heart isn't going to see a very <laughs> deep Ohio State bench. Well, if you're going to have any kind of injuries or a play with a depleted bench, now is the time to do it in your non-conference season yep. to get everybody healthy again. See a corner jump shot by 
D'Angelo, but Amir, if this was a Big Ten game they needed it, he could have played. Yeah. But well, why take the chance? It's not necessary at this point of the season. 54 to 27. Buckeyes up as we start here in the second half. First ever meeting between the pioneers of the Northeast Conference and the Buckeyes. This is the Poland native. And Nowitzki with a nice looking jump shot. That's one thing about Europeans. I don't care if you're from Poland, Spain, wherever, Jim, they all shoot well, don't they? They do, but they, you know, from the time they're younger, they're groomed to step out and shoot the basketball. And Coach Latina talked about Nowitzki's. You see an excellent pass from Shannon Scott to David Lee down the I mean to Lee down the lane. He said that with Nowinski, we don't have that kind of body in mm -hmm. our in our league that can shoot, that can score, that's a wide body. So he can bowl well and do some really good things once he gets comfortable playing. Like right there, once again, you dive right to the middle of the rim, you receive the pass, you go right up and score. Well, in his league, he's going to be bigger and stronger than a lot of the players he goes up against. Mid-range jumper, D'Angelo Russell hits it from about 10 feet. He has 19 points. And the Buckeyes lead Sacred Heart 58-31. to 31. Pull up 17 footer. Banks off, no good. Nowitzki scrapping for it. Fell, and he's called for traveling. That's a tough turnover. The 12th on Sacred Heart. Well, this is one of the things, as we know from Ohio State, especially with Sam Slam Thompson just throw it to the rim. But McDonald getting into the action a little bit. Hall again to my man Sam Thompson. When you, when you have a guy like that, it's tough to miss him on the alley. You, you just throw it to the rim. You know, with me, sometimes you have to put it in the right place. With Sam, he can just go get it from about anywhere. He makes a bad pass look good, doesn't he? Really he really does. Nice jump stop, tough jump shot, missed by Barnett. Shannon Scott the other way. Shannon Scott has already 10 assists and six points. So Shannon Scott who had 14 assists Tuesday night against Marquette. One shy of Aaron Kraft's Ohio State record. Has 10 tonight, and he's able to score as well. It's funny, talking to Shannon, he said, it feels like I'm back in high school when I had control of the basketball, I had control of the offense, and could pretty much do what I needed to do. Oh, Russell, well, I mean, well, D'Angelo Russell will get you a lot of assists, won't he? Well, it, it, you know, when you're surrounded by a good cast of characters in regard to guys that can score, it makes your job as a point guard easier. Now, the issue you have is how do you determine ball distribution, okay? If a guy is going hot, it's Shannon's job as a point guard to ensure that they continue to get the basketball. If a guy's not playing well, you want to try to get him a layup to get him motivated, to get him in rhythm. That's the responsibility of the point guard. Now, D'Angelo Russell's putting on a clinic. 24 points, 7 rebounds for the 6'5 freshman out of Louisville. And the Buckeyes up 65-31. to 31. Nearly three and a half minutes into the second half. D'Angelo Russell, he might score 40 tonight. Nice pass again. Wow, was that a great entry pass from Gaetano. Oh my. 27 for D'Angelo Russell. It kind of reminds me, I did two Indiana games last week, and the outstanding freshman, Ooh. James, James Blackman, Blackman Jr., leading the team and scoring at about 22 23 a game, allows the game to come to him. He doesn't force the situation. And that's what you see with D'Angelo Russell this evening. He's not forcing the situation, even though he could against the Sacred Heart team. He's playing within the confines of the offense, and ultimately he's more efficient doing that. Nowitzki. Well, that's a tough shot over Lee. Rebound, D'Angelo Russell, his eighth rebound. Yeah, these freshmen, you mentioned Blackman and Rick Hunt. Johnson. Johnson. Russell. Yeah, well, yeah, Johnson also, too. That's his third triple here in a matter of moments. And it's another Sacred Heart timeout. It's the D'Angelo Russell Show here at the Value City Arena. He has 30 points. That's a career high, and he's making it look easy. We're going to see history tonight thanks to D'Angelo Russell, Jim.
on the verge of breaking Michael Red's freshman record of 32 points. But uh, I tell you, man, uh, I watched him in practice, watched him early in exhibition. He has it all. I mean, whether that's the pull up, off the dribble, in transition, he can make plays. He's a lefty, which makes it even tougher to guard. But he has a little demeanor, a little swagger about him that he knows he's good. He knows that he can play. And you got to have a little ego to be really good at what you do. All the great ones do. And it's not a bad thing as long as it doesn't take away from what your team is trying to do. And D'Angelo Russell has all of that and a lot more. Yeah. Michael Red had 32 points as a freshman in 1998 against Penn State. The most ever by an Ohio State freshman. D'Angelo Russell has 30. Gaetano. Nice touch passing inside, but a travel. And the turnovers piling up. 14 on Sacred Heart. Well, here's some upcoming marquee matchups on BTN. Well, that's always a fierce game between Nebraska and Creighton. How about Oregon and Illinois? Purdue and Notre Dame. I didn't know that Purdue and Notre Dame do the road to each <laughs> other's school. I guess that's why they're playing in Indianapolis. Those are upcoming on BTN. So here come the Buckeyes. Shannon Scott in the front court. Buckeyes up 71 to 33. Long way to go in this one. Over 14 minutes from the wing. Air ball that time by Jay Sean Tate, the freshman out of Pickerington. Jay, Jay Sean's father, Jermaine, is from Toledo, played on my AAU team, played here at Ohio State, was taller, longer, ended up transferring to Cincinnati, but they have a, he has a younger brother that I heard can really go right now. Oh, in, in high school? Yeah. I think he's made, I don't think he's in high school yet. They help start recruiting him. That's Emma. right, yeah. Scott is open from the wing and knocks down the triple. Shannon Scott, just his second triple of the young season. He has nine points to go with 12 assists. And they're going to need that out of Shannon, in particular, when he's running the pick and roll against some, you know, Michigan State and Wisconsin. They're going to go underneath and force Shannon to take that shot. He has the stroke. He has the confidence. He just has to... Take the shot, I think, with more frequency time. Tate with a strip. The open man, Cam Williams. He came in leading the Buckeyes in scoring. He hasn't scored tonight. Tate scores and is fouled. The dirty work. I mean, once again, Jay Sean Tate somehow finds the basketball. He's in the right position, but... Just a little tap, a lot of hands flailing, bodies failing, but able with his offhand to finish inside. And, and when the game gets tough, Tom, and scrappy, that's who you want with you because you know he's going to be in there for a fight and not a physical fight in regards to fighting, but, you know, really not giving up, putting the body, diving on the floor, and those kind of plays at times energizes your team. Well, Tate has six points, four rebounds. Again, that Mata has... One of his deeper teams here in recent years. And he's really able to go 10 deep from the corner. Glowiak with the miss on the three. Strong rebound, McDonald. Buckeyes on top by 42. Slicing inside and fouled is freshman Kata Bates Diop. So Bates Diop will go at the line to shoot two. Gaetano picks up his second. Yeah, another freshman starting to develop a little bit more than D'Angelo Russell, but has a lot of has a very good skill set, long, athletic, can knock it down. He's going to add weight to that body a little bit for Big Ten play, but uh, very excited about his progress and the potential here at yeah. Ohio State. Well, this freshman group for Thad Mata was ranked in the top five of all the freshman groups coming in this season. And Ohio State just signed another crop that's ranked in the top 10 in the country. So back-to-back -to -back top 10 recruiting classes, and that's why Thad Mata has won 20 games every year he's been a college coach. He can coach, but he knows better than anybody. You better be able to recruit and get good players. It helps when you win. It helps when you're on national TV. It helps when 
the credibility perspective of sending guys off to the NBA mm -hmm. from a recruiting. Now you're able to go into these young men's homes and convince the mothers and fathers that one, as you see Diop right there, knocked down a nice jump shot, out of bounds, play well executed. But not only do you get to play at a big time level, but you're at a big time school from an education perspective, alumni perspective. All those are selling points to get top-notch talent to come and play at Ohio State. Foul zone with a miss. And a tie-up. Possession arrow favors the Pioneers. 82 to 33 Buckeyes. Well, you look at the Buckeyes. This is an interesting blend, isn't it, Jim? That, not many teams have five seniors, and then you blend it with five freshmen among the best five freshmen in the country. So it's an interesting blend for Thad Mata. Well, a lot of times you don't get to have really your top-notch players beat, that play a lot of minutes beat seniors. But when you can have that good combination of seniors who have played and been there and experienced winning, but also the heartbreak of losing, now those young freshmen have mentors. And a lot of times when you don't have seniors, when you have young freshmen that don't have anything or anyone to bounce some things off, it's a little tougher transition. From the corner, Gloyak knocks down the triple. So Gloyak has a couple of triples tonight. 82-36 Buckeyes, 11.50 to play. That's just too easy for McDonald, who getting the start tonight has six. I beg your pardon, he came off the bench. And Anthony Lee was able to get some quality minutes. Yeah in the lineup early on, which I think bodes well for Ohio State because you're going to need both of those young men to battle inside later in the year. Off-balance shot by foul zone doesn't go. McDonald yanks down his eighth rebound. So we've got a timeout. Everybody contributing tonight. Thunder is dunked by Trey McDonald. Well, tomorrow night, the Spartans take the court against Santa Clara. Coverage starts at 7 Eastern. Presented by April Air on BTN and BTN to go. Michigan State pounded Loyola the other night. 20th ranked Ohio State Buckeyes blitzing Sacred Heart. 84 to 36. We still have 11-23 to play. It's name your score. We had mentioned before that D'Angelo Russell was close to breaking a freshman record. That's what we were told by the folks, but there's been a correction now. Jared Sullinger holds the record at Ohio State. Most points by a freshman. He had 40 this freshman year against IUPUI. I'm so glad you corrected that because my Twitter account, my text message has <laughs> been blowing up. And the number one culprit is Sat Sullinger, which is Jared's father, <laughs> that told me to tell the producer to get it right. <laughs> this is what happened. I told him to calm down. We'll get it taken care of. So we, I'm so glad you did that. We just go by what we have been exactly. told by the folks here at Ohio State. As D'Angelo Russell now has 31 points. 85-36 Buckeyes, 11.09 to play. Russell now with 32. So that is eight behind Jared Sullinger's 40-point explosion against IUPUI. We played a little over nine minutes here in the second half. Gaetano, good pump fake. Nice find down low. Nowitzki had it blocked by McDonald, and he recovers it. Heck of a play by McDonald. Russell ahead, oh. and a beautiful block, but then a follow by McDonald, who's doing it on both ends of the floor. McDonald with a rebound. Buckeyes running up 88-36. Russell short on the three. Rebound yanked out of there by Chris Robinson, a freshman. Broom driving, scooping, missing. McDonald has another rebound. That's his 12th. So many easy missed shots. You see Diop in transition that the Pioneers had. I mean, they attacked the basket. They made the move. They got to where they needed to get to on the court. But 
the inability at, at times to finish over the length. Yeah. You know, that's the difference here is finishing over length or the anticipation that somebody's coming behind you. But right there, Chris Robinson, Chris Robinson able to knock down a three in the corner. So the Buckeyes now lead it 88 to 39. We're halfway through the second half. How's that Twitter account going? Oh, Satch just hit me back and said he's laughing his butt off because uh, <laughs> I gave him a little shot out on, on TV. And, you know, he, he, he calls himself a golfer. No. No, please. He's terrible. <laughs> In my Charles Barkley voice. Terrible. Uh -huh. but, he, but he thinks he can play, and he talks the whole time. You know, I'll tell you one thing he could do. He could coach. Oh, he could coach. And he had sons that could play. Didn't That's he? right. Well, that would speak volume for his golf game. <laughs> I'm going to get a text in about, yeah, probably about 10 seconds and counting about that. Hey, the way this game's going, see if he'll come down. We'll interview. Ohio State up 88 Ohio to 39 with 920 to play. First team second. Well, he'll be more than happy to come in partake in our broadcast and <laughs> express his infinite wisdom in the game of basketball but more importantly the game of life and golf on how he just kicks everybody's tail on the golf course which is a flat out lie. nice block inside by Bates Dia I can tell you emphatically that the 13 or 12 rebounds by Trey McDonald, that's a career <laughs> high for Trey. <laughs> and you took out, you made sure you got the yep. notes and everything before you I'm made the I'm doing my own research. Yeah, yeah. We're just throwing <laughs> our producer right under the bus right now. He's just killing him right now. He, if he was drowning right now in the ocean, a life preserver wouldn't be coming right now for me or you, Tom. He'll just be shark uh, bait. <laughs> we love you, Dan. <laughs> love you to death, buddy. There's Evan <laughs> Kelly at the line. He's a four-year starter. His dad, Earl, was a terrific player at UConn back in the early and mid-'80s. And his dad had a tremendous career at UConn. Unfortunately for Earl Kelly, that came just before Jim Calhoun took over that program, and then he built UConn into one of the elite powers in college hoops. Yeah, it's amazing how timing works, right? Yeah. And, you know, you could be a year ahead, a year behind, and things can go north to south, just depending on what happens, you know? Tate with the miss. That guy's up 88 to 41. 8 23 to play. There's a steal by Shannon Scott. He's looking for someone. He'll drive and had it blocked, but a foul is going to be called on Kane Broom. And so Shannon Scott will go to the line with a chance now to have a double-double. Well, well, here's the difference between big-time basketball. Watch the contact with Shannon Scott and Broom. Okay. Shannon Scott has built his body up and has become stronger. That time, Broom didn't have a chance. It's like... You know, Ragdow hit Shannon yeah. Scott and just flew out the way. That's the, when you look at the body composition of Big Ten players, and mm -hmm. he does not take anything from Sacred Heart, but it's the reality of the situation, and you see it in that example with the steal, but also with the contact. Well, Scott, a double-double, Jim, 11 points, 13 assists, so he needs three assists to set a record for most assists in a game by a Buckeye. He had 14 against Marquette. Aaron Kraft with a record of 15. Rebound by Evan Kelly. And the skip pass goes out of bounds on the Buckeye deflection. Ohio State in a route tonight. Just under eight minutes to play. Basketball on BTN is presented by April Air. Feel good inside. And brought to you in part by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. There's a good look at my partner. One of the few that has his jersey number hanging from the rafters here at the Value City Arena. Former Big Ten Player of the Year, Jim Jackson. And the Buckeyes. They don't need Jimmy tonight. 90 to 41, Ohio State leads Sacred Heart. You know, Jim, and there's the number. And that is some kind of an honor. Congratulations. Taking because up that space. never gets old. Taking up space up there. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I, I brought a good friend of mine, business partner here, right? Jim was empty, and he wanted to see the jersey. We talked about it. The day I brought him, 
wasn't up there. He gives me the business all the time about, yeah, I go to the arena and your jersey's supposed to be there and it wasn't even in the raffle. Oh. Well, Jason Tate. Hoping maybe he can get a jersey up there someday. The freshman has eight. Where the what heck was your jersey? I, I think my reasoning was they were cleaning, cleaning <laughs> that day. So a few other jerseys weren't there either. So I was able, but I, I mean, I get, he gives me the business all the time about that. Nice tip in. That time by Cole Walton, who scored his first points of the season here tonight. A couple of field goals. Buckeyes up 92 to 43 as we near the seven minute mark. Oh, another good look and a foul. I'll tell you what, if Bates Diop had gotten that up quickly, Shannon Scott would have had his 14th assist. We can show highlights all day, but it shows kind of athleticism. We talked about the freshman for Ohio State, Shannon Scott, not giving up. I mean, still diving on the ground to keep the play alive. And I can remember playing in games like this, Tom, back when I was in school, where you're up such a large, large margin early. And it is hard to concentrate because, yeah. again, things are so easy. But, and I'm going to use the word professional from this perspective, is that you got to figure out a way to still stay engaged with your mind because if not, you, you try to do some things, could cause some injuries, which you don't want. You get out of doing the little things that Coach Mata wants you yeah. to do or your coaches want you to do. So it, it's not easy to do this, but you're expected to figure out how to do it. And it bears repeating, Jim, that the Buckeyes only have nine healthy bodies tonight, but they're nine guys that play a lot. So it's not like Thad Mott is trying to run up the score. It's just he doesn't have those usual guys that sit at the end of the bench that never get into a game except this one. He's going with guys that play all the time just because of the injuries. Well, also, too, but the last few games, he's played 10 deep. Yeah. With, you know, with more minutes, guys playing at least 10 minutes and scoring. So it's a little bit different from what you've see in, seen in the past from Coach Mata as far as a shorter bench. Now, will that be reduced once you get into conference play later in the year? She's Cam Williams in the corner. Oh, no. But it's a great sign to have when you can have basically two units of guys that you trust and believe in that can get the job done. Well, doesn't it also make you better as far as practice? Oh, yeah. Well, people are going to compete. Yeah. Eight of eight, Diop, the freshman out of normal Illinois. Knocks down the first. Be sure to stay tuned right after the completion of our game. A brand new edition of Big Ten Elite featuring the 1996 Ohio State football Buckeyes. It's coming up next on BTN. So what do you think about the playoff system right now? You know it's always good. I'm saying this. No matter what it is, it's always going to be something. Even with the double NCAA. Yeah tournament it's you know 64 wasn't good enough when you went to 68 you still had teams left out i mean how do you resolve that situation to make it i mean you're always going to have an argument i just think if you win a big 10 championship you have to have your conference champions in the playoffs but well i mean with that you know with the big 12 not having yeah. a conference champion championship but I guess I would like a playoff situation, Jim, where you're rewarded for winning a conference title. If that takes eight teams, it takes eight teams. But nobody on the NCAA football committee is called. So you're the first one to ask. Well, you know what? I think early on, they, you, know, you try the four, but in the back of your mind, you know you're probably going to have to increase it. So I will give, you know, the committee at least that amount due credit. Jim, and, and, and think of, you, you mentioned March Madness. No matter if you have 64, 68 teams, we spend more time talking about the three or four that didn't make it than the 64, 68 that did make well, it. You, so you're always going to have somebody complain. But you always complain. You also talk about seeding. Yeah. Along with the teams that got left out, why did this team get seeded as high or as low as it did? So... It's so never the right, right one, equation. Is it always going to be right? Second, no. But four. does it work? Time will tell for the college. But for, for the NCAA tournament basketball, it works. 
and for college football right now. You got a lot of people talking about it. A lot of people talking about it. That's right. I don't, I don't like the idea of the NCAA, another turnover by Sacred Heart, trying to reveal the rankings early on in basketball, kind of like they're doing football. The, the excitement of not knowing mm -hmm. was the beauty, I think, when you come down to Selection Sunday of who the number one seeds are, who's in, you know, those kind of things. I, I don't want to lose that excitement. No. No, Sacred Heart's still playing hard. They're just not talented enough to stay with Ohio State. One thing we've learned about Vince Fritz, he is not bashful. The freshman keeps launching, but not successfully. Cam Williams with the bank. He led Ohio State in scoring coming into this one at 14 points a game, and the redshirt freshman has his first bucket of the night. Sometimes it happens like that. You, you know, no matter what you do, the ball just won't go in the hoop. But it's nice like that. But you can do other things on the court yep. to still help your team win. And you can't get caught up into, well, I had a bad game because I didn't shoot well. Well, you can have a really good shooting get, game and not play well. Oh, holy boy. Getting a little physical. McDonald took one to the face. That foul will be on Edu Kugo. I'm not even trying his first hit. 97 43. Buckeyes. Well, after this game, Big Ten Elite follows on BTN, and it'll be about the 1996 Ohio State Buckeyes under John Cooper. Go champs in the Big Ten. And got a huge win over Arizona State in a thrilling Rose Bowl. Remember Joe Germain with that winning touchdown pass and the Buckeyes finished that season second in the country. Boy, John Cooper had some lot of talents that with a playoff, that would have been fun to see. Uh, John, Coach Cooper had a lot of talent. Yep. Now, not always being able to win, but if you look at his compiled record, what he was able to do at Ohio State, very successful. But I remember those days with, with Coop Carlos Snow, Lonzo Spillman, Ricky Dudley was there to play. Benny Clark. McDonald with a miss. He's had a, the best night of his career with 13 rebounds, 8 points. Robert Smith. There goes on. Like he's on going on and on. I'm telling you. There's a pretty good Heisman Trophy running back. Eddie There's George. A restaurant here in town. Yeah, Eddie George. Yeah, a lot of talent. Oh, my. Nice I like up and under by Kane Broom. I like Broom. I, I mean, as a freshman, he, he, one thing for sure, he's not afraid to go inside. Oh. And, he, and he, he's a sneaky athlete as well. You saw early with the floater, a couple times getting to the basket, able to elevate. Now he just has to get more comfortable finishing at this level. But in their league, he can play. Well, that bucket means Shannon Scott has 15 assists that time. Aaron Kraft for the all-time record for most assists in a game by a Buckeye. Tate made the jumper, the assist to Shannon Scott. How about Shannon Scott? The pass down low, blocked by Bates Diop. Shannon Scott now has 40 assists in three games. You know, it's such an anomaly now. You look at that and you say you, you're amazed by it. But isn't that what point guard's supposed to do? Yeah. I mean, really? But he's a, a true point guard, isn't he, in that he's not looking to score first. Well, think about his mindset. He, he came out of high school as a McDonald All-American, expected to come in and play right away. That didn't happen. So he changed his thought process to become a better defensive player to give something to the team. And now he's back in the position that he's accustomed to Play in the role that he loves, which is distributing the basketball, feeding his teammates, and winning basketball games. And I'm gonna go back to it. That's what that's what yeah. point guards are supposed to do. Now, I was thought it was interesting, Coach Thad Mata telling us today that for Shannon Scott, of course, with Aaron Kraft ahead of him for three years, Aaron Kraft was the unquestioned leader and point guard, and Shannon was willing to defer to Aaron Kraft. So they've had to tell Shannon, hey, you've got to take this club and lead it now. This is your team to lead. Well, it's not always easy when your game offensively and leadership kind of has been dormant a little bit to try to get it back. But Shannon's done an outstanding job of doing it. I think the trip earlier this summer in the Bahamas helped as well to get him ready to go in that leadership role. And he's, he, he seems so comfortable, like it's a natural position again for him 
I.E. like it was when he was in high school. Well, there's a record-breaking 16th assist for Shannon Scott on the Jay Sean Tate bucket. Tate has a dozen. That's a school record for Shannon Scott. Cam Williams with a jam. And the Buckeyes have scored over 100 points for the first time in three years. Well, I haven't seen it come up on the official stance yet that that was 16 assists. It sure uh -oh. looked like an assist, uh -oh. didn't it? This is Scott into the front court. Evidently, it's not official yet. Our producer didn't tell you that, did he? No. <laughs> <laughs> he is going to kill me right now. He's going to really make me earn it tonight with these little... Well, there's strokes. the assist. You got to count that one. <laughs> A record night for Shannon Scott. Another block by McDonald, but a foul on the drive. 106-45, Ohio State. Ohio State now won. Jay Sean Tate is third. Well, a little poke from behind. Shannon Scott defensively and then making the correct but simple play. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's the game. A lot of times, Tom, we as basketball players tend to complicate it a lot more than it has to be. If somebody's open, you pass it. If you have an open shot, you shoot. If your man gets beat, your partner, help him out. Yeah, you know, it's really not yeah. as difficult as it needs to be. But again, we tend to make it a little bit more than it has to be. Well, it's ironic. Shannon Scott sets an Ohio State record with 16 assists in the game. His dad, Charlie Scott, set a lot of records at North Carolina, but he was a scorer and oh, one yeah, of the no. great scorers. No, in he, the game. he loved to put it up. I mean, Charlie, and Charlie's not bashful to tell you that either. Did he love <laughs> to put it up? 106 46 Buckeyes. McDonald short on the shot, rebound foul zone. Sacred Heart down 60. Make it 58. 106 48 Buckeyes with a half minute to go. Here from the Valley City Arena, the 20th ranked Buckeyes. Getting a record-breaking 16 assists from Shannon Scott. Ohio State got 32 points by D'Angelo Russell. And the Buckeyes had six players in double figures. And they did not overlook the Pioneers tonight. 106-48. Buckeyes, a winner here tonight to go to 3-0 in their first ever meeting of Sacred Heart is Anthony Latina and Thad Mata shake hands at center court. And congratulations to Shannon Scott. He had 14 assists Tuesday night. And a Ohio State record 16 tonight. And the Buckeyes win it 106-48. Trey McDonald didn't get into double figures in scoring, but he had a career high, 14 rebounds. Hey, be sure to stay tuned right after the completion of our game for a brand new edition of Big Ten Elite featuring the 1996 Ohio State Football Buckeyes. It's coming up next on BTN. So Ohio State now 3-0. The Buckeyes came in here leading the country in shooting at 63%. Tonight, the Buckeyes shot 57%, 44% from behind the arc. And Ohio State, with 10 triples as a team, rolled to a 106-48 win over Sacred Heart. Let's go to... Center court, Jim Jackson was one of the stars tonight. Thanks, Tom. Here with, yes, the star of the night, Shannon Scott, able to set the record with 16 assists. We talked before the game. You said you felt more comfortable. The game is slowing down. Is this what you envision in regards to really running this Ohio State Buckeye team? Hey, definitely. We have so many weapons around me this year. Uh, everybody comes ready to play. Everybody wants to score the ball. I think that's the main thing that we had this year that we didn't have last year. For you, Shannon, it had to be tough at times knowing you really couldn't play the kind of role that you wanted, but you, you talked to me about playing defense and doing the little things to make this team better. Now that you're in this leadership role, what are some of the things you try to impart to your teammates? Uh, just keeping everybody level-headed, really. I mean, we know we have a lot of talent this year, but there's nothing really. The Big Ten's a great league, and we know we have to play our A game if we want to win. So 
Just keeping everybody focused and uh, ready to play every game. Well, how much does it, does it help you to have D'Angelo Russell, Cam Williams, Mark Loving knocking down jump shots? I mean, they're big time players, and just playing with them makes my game a lot easier. So, I mean, I really appreciate having them on my team. All right, thanks a lot. Thank Congratulations, Sue Shannon. Thank you. All right. Coach Mata, uh, I think the score kind of speaks for itself, but when you go back and evaluate a blowout win like this, what are some of the things that you look for? Well, I, I think the biggest thing is, are we doing what we're supposed to do? And, and you know, guys took some plays off, uh, especially in the first half. Uh, but, you know, are we are we positioning ourselves in the right place offensively? Um, you know, I, I thought our shot selection remained good throughout the course of the game, which was something we had talked about at halftime. How, how impressed are you with the level or the step that Shannon Scott has been able to take because it's, it's hard for a player to kind of turn off his offensive game or leadership mindset for two or three years but now to turn it back on he's been he's just been just fantastic at the beginning of the year yeah well I think this was Shannon you know Shannon has always played on great teams and and uh, as we talked about today's shoot around you know trying to get him to be more assertive I it, it, I've told him I said look I want you to play as fast as you possibly can and we'll adjust to you and and you know I think he's done a great job and, and obviously guys making shots around him really opens things up how hard is that though for a player when you want to tell him to play faster but can he can he kind of visualize that a little yeah bit? you know I, I think those are the things um, in, in, in terms of getting them showing them on film and, and like I, I talked about our spacing offensively opens up a lot of things for Shannon to make decisions and right now he's doing a great job making decisions and I would be remiss not to mention a young freshman over there who had 30 plus points tonight with uh, D'Angelo Russell it seemed like he was a little bit calmer allowed the game to come to him a lot different than the Marquette game yeah no question about it and, and as we talked today I mean he probably needed a game like that uh, just in terms of knowing that, that this stuff's for real now and, and uh, you know it's great to see him get rolling because he was on one there for a while all right thanks a lot coach all right, thank all right, you. I get it back to you Tom thank you very much Jim well that's it from Columbus Ohio the Ohio State Buckeyes Route Sacred Heart, 106 to 48. D'Angelo Russell was part of an outstanding offensive night. 32 points for the freshman as he knocked down four from behind the arc. And Russell also had nine rebounds. Six Buckeyes in double figures. Trey McDonald, 14 rebounds. And Shannon Scott, a record-breaking 16 assists. Coming up next on BTN, an all-new Big Ten Elite featuring the 1996 Ohio State Buckeyes. For Jim Jackson, this is Tom Hamilton. So long from Columbus, a presentation of the Big Ten Network.